Hello everyone, this is Randall Sanborn Fields and welcome to another episode of Reading Brainbow. I haven't been around in about two months, but I am back and we have a story for you to celebrate Black History Month. So in February, uh, we got a few days coming, uh, there's a Black History Month and this whole month, I will be reading books about black people, African Americans especially, and by black authors. So hopefully you will join the ride and like and subscribe. This channel is not only for children, but it's also for adults, ESL, to learn reading, to learn the culture of uh, of other peoples, it is a positive, positive place to, uh, just to learn, sit back, relax, and just listen. Okay. So today we're reading when Rosa Parks went fishing. It's by Rachel Ruiz illustrated by Sharia, uh, Fideli. No discussion of the civil rights movement is complete without the story of Rosa Parks. So let's get that. The school bell rang. Young Rosa Parks gathered her things and headed home. Halfway there, a white boy on roller skates tried to push her off the sidewalk. Rosa pushed him back. I didn't want to be pushed, seeing that I wasn't bothering him at all, she later said. I know, child, Rosa's mother said, but I worry. In the 1920s, black people were not supposed to push or even talk back to white people. They could be arrested, or worse. Rosa grew up trying to stop the unfair treatment of others. And then one day, in 1955, she did something simple and brave. She sat down in a bus seat and became a hero to millions of people. Rosa Louise McCulley was born on February 4th, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. Her father, James, was a traveling woodworker. Her mother, Leona, was a teacher. Rosa's mother loved to learn. She passed that love of learning on to Rosa. She also taught Rosa to have respect for herself and others. She said, it was the most important thing. Rosa and her family lived on her grandparents' farm in Pine Level, Alabama. They had fruit, pecan, and walnut trees. They also had a garden and raised a few animals. Rosa enjoyed exploring the nearby woods, ponds, and creeks with her younger brother, Sylvester. He followed her everywhere she went and repeated everything she said. Money was scarce, but Rosa's family found ways to make do with what they had. They didn't buy ready-made clothes. Rosa's mother sewed their clothes. 
she was a good seamstress. She taught Rosa to sew too. While their mother worked at the school, Rosa and Sylvester spent time with their grandparents. They fished at the nearby creek. Rosa learned a lot from her grandparents. Remember to always stand up for what you believe in, Rosa, Grandmother Rose said. And don't let people push you around, Grandpa John added. Rosa started school in 1919 at age six. She went to an all-black one-room schoolhouse, and she loved it. She already knew how to read. Her mother had taught her since Rosa was just three years old. At recess, Rosa and the other little girls played games. They laughed and sang their way through Little Sally Walker sitting in the saucer and ring around the roses. About this time, Rosa learned a big, hard lesson. Beyond her grandparents' farm, life could be dangerous for black people. There were groups of white people who hated anyone whose skin color wasn't white. They burned down black people's homes and churches. Sometimes white kids called hurtful names. They threw rocks at Rosa and her friends. Rosa was angry. Why did people act that way? Didn't everyone deserve respect? That's what Rosa's mother had always told her. Didn't blacks deserve to be treated the same as whites? In the summer of 1921, Rosa's mother took her to Montgomery, Alabama. Eight-year-old Rosa was amazed by the big modern city. It was much different than Pine Level. Tall buildings stretched up to the sky. Shops selling fancy dresses and hats lined the sidewalks. Montgomery was the first place Rosa saw segregation. The law said that people could be treated differently because of their skin color. There were separate drinking fountains for white people and black people. The fountains were labeled white and colored. On the city buses, black people had to sit at the back. White people sat up front. If someone broke the law, he or she could be arrested and put in jail. Rosa knew the law was wrong. She thought if enough people stood up and said it was wrong, maybe things could change. After she finished fifth grade, Rosa went to live with her aunt Fanny in Montgomery. There were better schooling options in the city for Rosa. She became a student of Montgomery Industrial School for Girls. Everyone called it Miss White School. Miss Alice White was the principal and co-founder. Miss White was Caucasian. So were all the teachers at the school. They had moved there from the northern states. At the time, black girls in the South had few places to go to school. Miss White and her teachers wanted to change that fact. 
Rosa adored Miss White. From her, Rosa learned many lessons. She learned that she was a person who deserved to be treated fairly and equally. She also learned to set high goals for herself. Believe anything in life is possible, Miss White said. Rosa and Miss White wrote letters to each other long after Rosa left school. Rosa treasured their friendship. It reminded her that not all white people hated black people. When Rosa was 16, she left high school to help care for her ill grandmother. Rosa wasn't happy about leaving school, but she did not complain. Nothing was more important to her than family. Rosa worked hard cleaning houses to earn money. Sometimes she needed more money, so she sold fruit from her family's trees. It was a tough time for Rosa. She often looked to her church for help. Her faith got her through many long, hard days. When Rosa was 18, she met Raymond Parks. They married the following year. In 1932. Like Rosa, Raymond loved learning. He was one of the first members of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. The organization worked to improve the lives of black people across the nation. Later, Rosa also joined the NAACP. CP. Rosa was happy, but she always regretted not finishing high school. With Raymond's support, she went back to school, and in 1934, Rosa reached her goal. She earned her high school diploma. Nearly 20 years later, Rosa would stand up for herself and others in a big way, by taking a seat. Afterward. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks got on a bus to go home. She sat in the black section like she was supposed to. But when the bus filled up, the bus driver told her, to get up and give her seat to a white man. Rosa refused and saying calmly, no. When the driver said he was going to call the police, Rosa said quietly, you may do that. Some people later said that Rosa didn't give up her seat because she was old and tired. I was 42, she replied. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. Rosa was arrested and later let out of the jail. There was a trial. She was found guilty and told to pay $14. She also lost her job. In protest, thousands of people, mostly black, boycotted the city buses in Montgomery. The boycott lasted more than a year. Rosa and her lawyer thought the ruling was unfair, so they went to the U.S. Supreme Court. The court ruled on November 13, 1956, that bus segregation in Alabama must end. From then on, black people were free to sit wherever they wanted on a bus. Rosa Parks became an important leader in the civil rights movement in America. She died on October 24, 
2005 at the age of 92. Glossary Arrested, stopped, and held in jail because a law may have been broken. Boycott To stop buying or using a product or service to show support for an idea or group of people. Caucasian A person who is of white European descent not of Hispanic origin. Civil rights, the rights that all people have to freedom and equal treatment under the law. Lawyer, a person who is trained to advise people about the law. NAACP, a civil rights organization founded in 1909, abbreviation for National Association for the advancement of colored people. Protest, to speak out about something strongly and publicly. Regret, to feel sad or disappointed about something, especially something that should have been done differently. Respect, to believe in the quality and worth of others and yourself. Segregation, the practice of keeping people of people, uh, oh, sorry, the practice of keeping groups of people apart, especially based on skin color. Trial, the court process to decide if a charge or claim is true. U.S. Supreme Court, the most powerful court of law in the United States. And I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, it was a very interesting story, and I'll be reading more of these types of stories for the whole month of February. I'm kind of giving you an early dose of what I'll be reading for the whole month of February, probably one or two books a week, most likely one book a week. And uh, you are free to comment on these stories. So happy Black History Month. Uh, I hope you learned something. And this is Reading Brainbow. And my name is Randall Sanborn Fields. And remember, reading is fundamental. Goodbye.